text and the topic. Can we raise the praise at the MSW? There are two characters or two main characters in our verses on this morning. The first character is a young man or a boy by the name of Jehoash. Jehoash, according to our first verse, became king when he was seven years old. When you consider this, this text, it's impo important for us to realize that when it comes to God, he does not restrict his blessings, promotions based upon age. You can be young and blessed of the Lord. You can be a child and God use you for his glory. And that's what I love about God because, again, he does not restrict his hand from our lives just because we are young. Though you may have to wait till you're 16 to get your license, though you may have to wait until you're 18 to go to the military, God doesn't wait till you're a teenager. God will do for you, through you, and bless you while you are young. That ought to make somebody excited. That means you don't have to wait till you get like grandmama and them to have a testimony. You can have a testimony while you are young. You don't have to have the experience to where when I get old, I'm going to go get on drugs. I'm going to the club. I'm going to get I'm going to get toe up and then God going to come and deliver me. No, you was born in sin and shaped in iniquity and as soon as you realize that Jesus can save you you can have a testimony while you are young matter of fact let me take a quick poll anybody in here can say I'm young and God has blessed me anybody in here can say I'm young but God is using me you are a miracle for somebody to behold not only should we recognize how God started using Jehoash when he was a child, but it's also important for us to understand the meaning of his name. Jehoash name means the flame of Yahweh. The flame of Yahweh. Yahweh is the self-existing God the true and living God. And so his name represents being on fire for God. His name represents being on fire for God. And see, if you are young and you have given your life to Jesus, you should be a flame for Yahweh. You should be on fire fire for him you you ought to just take a moment and look at what the lord has done for you and look how god has been using you take a look at how his grace his favor his goodness and mercy has been following you all the days of your life that should get you stirred up to where you have the testimony, yeah, I'm saved, but I ain't no sit down Christian. Yeah, I'm saved, but I ain't no mouse quiet Christian. I, I, I got a flame on the inside of me. I, I serve a God whose fire has consumed me. And one way you can tell that a person is on fire for the Lord is through their praise. You, when you're on fire for the Lord, young people, you you like Jeremiah. You, you can't keep quiet. 
His word is burning on the inside of you. It's in. It's like fire shoved up in your bones. You got to give God a praise. Yeah, you young, but but you know how to dance with them feet. Yeah, you young, but you so on fire, you'll give him a hallelujah, which means praise the Lord. You'll put those hands together and you'll clap because God has been good to you. And it's a shame when you go to a holiness church, but you got to search real hard for any young folk that may be on fire. But I'm wondering, do we have any young folk in here that's saying, you ain't got to search. All you got to do is look my way, Pastor because I'm young and I'm a flame for the Lord I got a praise and I don't care who looking at me I'll give God a praise in the church but if I'm at the Dollar General I give him a praise if I stop by the red box I give him a praise y'all may not want to help me but I'm feeling that fire on this morning ain't got the praise team behind me ain't got no musicians plucking or hitting the drums but but when you on fire you you stand by ready to give God the praise. Let me go ahead and just take a few moments and have a little praise break and if you want to join me because you on fire you ought to give God the praise right where you are. Woo, hallelujah. Thank God I'm not dead. Thank God I know how to open that mouth know how to shake my head, know how to leap for a little joy. I got anybody that's on fire for the Lord in here, you'll give him a praise no matter what you going through because you know it's going to work out together for your good. You'll turn in victory and you don't care who looking at you. You'll shout hallelujah because God has been good to you. Baby, you driving in your own car, that's something to give God the praise. You ain't in no hospital right now. You ought to be on fire giving him the praise. God got food on your table. You ought to give him the praise. You got the use of your limbs. You ought to be on fire. Shouldn't nobody have to stir you up as good as God been to you. You got on name, brand, and designer. You ought to give him the, give him the praise. You ought to give them the praise. Am I right about it? Y'all sit down. When you're on fire for God, it's not only demonstrated in your praise, young folk. It's demonstrated in your service. When you are on fire for God, you are not a church member that does nothing. You are the type of Christian that comes into God's house looking to put your hand to work. You're looking for something to do. You want God to use you. Yeah, that's how you know when somebody on fire, they get involved in their local ministry. They don't complain about what they don't have. They use what they do have to give God the glory. And see, that's what we want, young people. Matter of fact, that's what we've been doing for years. There's no way you can have a productive youth and young adult church when you don't have active youth and young adults. See, when you on fire for the Lord, you looking for something to do. It don't matter if you just saying, Pastor, can I pass out some envelopes? I want the Lord to use me. I heard y'all need somebody on the camera. Well, you know what? I be on my phone. Surely y'all can teach me because I got some time to get on the camera. You looking for something to do in God's house. Too many of God's folk come to the house talking about they on fire, but don't do jack. You got to do something in God's house. He been good to us. Am I right about it? You should feel disgraced when you can give your time and energy to your local school only. I mean, you put in three and four hours on the field, on the track, on the basketball court, in the Spanish club, in the beta club, or whatever club the school is offering. You don't have no problem going to the wreck, getting involved, getting on the team, but then look in the house of the Lord and you're not doing nothing. It's something wrong with that. No, when you on fire, you, you going to serve the Lord with some gladness. You going to learn an instrument. You'll read an announcement. You'll be a greeter. You'll help the minister, help the first lady. Do I have anybody in here that's excited about serving in God's house? 
yeah we don't need to just wait till we get grown it's something for you to do right here and right now look at somebody say it's something for you to do Get on the social media ministry. Get in the intercessory prayer ministry. Ask about the praise team. Don't be just singing at home, but ask God, how can he use that voice in his youth and young adult church? Design a t-shirt. Do something. Look at somebody say, put your hand to something. That's what folk do when they are on fire for the Lord. You got to praise and you participate. Tell somebody you got to praise and you participate. And you just don't do it to be doing it. You excited about it. You want to do it. You asking about it. You, you trying to get better. You practice at home. You study. You pray. You do all what's necessary because you on fire for him. If I'm talking right, somebody say, you talking right. Jehoash was young and on and on fire. But our verse here reveals that he did what was right in the sight of the Lord. Tell somebody he did right in God's sight. And that means a number of things to teenagers and young adults. But I just want to deal with two things that the Lord told me to deal with. First of all, when someone does right in the sight of the Lord, it says that they are a just person. Jehoash was just. He was a righteous boy. Righteous people or just people trust God. Did you hear how the Lord was using Minister Sarita on this morning? You just got to trust God. No matter what you're going through in your personal life, though you may not fully understand it, though you may not like it, if you are just, you just got to trust him. Lord, I'm just going to depend on you that you're going to help me through this situation. I'm going to depend on your word. Things may not be going as quickly as you desire, but you say, I'm just going to trust you. Maybe without a job right now, but you're just going to, you're going to trust them. Maybe hurting emotionally, sexually, or in other areas, but you're not going to give up. You're just going to, you're going to trust. Lord, I'm just going to trust you. And Solomon said, when it comes to trust, we need to trust the Lord with all of our heart. And that takes something, young people. That means your mind needs to be in the right place. Your words need to be in the right place and your actions need to be in the right place and so when God looks at your life he said yeah she is trusting me even though it's not going the way she desires I can see she thinking right talking right and doing what's right I got anybody in here that's going through something but your mind is saying you know what? I'm just gonna trust him that's how you got to be, young folk. I, I can't change this on my own. I'm just going to trust God. Let me give you a reference. Notice Psalm 64 and 10. It says, the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and trust in him. So I need to trust him, but I also need to be happy. I just need to count it all joy because he going to help me through it. Even when you mess up, young people, you still trust God. Even when you make bad choices, you still trust God. Even when he allows you to reap what you have sown, you still, what do you do? Trust God. Lord, I'm just going to depend on you. I'm not going to get in the flesh or allow space for the devil I'm just going to trust you do I still have your attention 
I'm going to trust you. I heard them hit the floor, but I'm just going to trust you, Lord. I'm just going to trust that they all right. Secondly, when Jehoash did right in the sight of the Lord, it means or suggested that he strived to stay straight. He strived to stay straight. Staying straight means you just going to continue to walk in truth. I'm trying to stay on the straight, Lord. I'm trying to do the right thing. Temptation, pressure is on me, but I'm staying on the straight. I'm trying to do the right thing. And, and y'all silent, but y'all can't fool me. It takes something to stay straight. I said it takes something to walk in truth. Yes, it does. When you used to smoking and your body is calling for that, that smoke, you striving to stay straight. Lord, I, I feel like I need to just relieve my mind. You, you got to write this and all, but I'm going to stay on the straight. I, I, can't, I can't argue about me not having these feelings, but I'm not going to yield to these feelings. When you used to doing a little something, something, when your flesh rise up, you have to tell yourself, I'm feeling it, but I'm staying on the straight. I ain't going the way I used to go. I ain't doing what I used to do. I'm just going to stay on the straight path. How many ever been striving to stay on the straight path? Yeah, you could easily get off and get away with it. You could easily get off the straight path and, and, and do something that you have no business doing. But when you're trying to do right in the sight of the Lord, you're just going to strive to stay straight. Y'all ought to encourage somebody and say, don't you give up just stay straight I know your friends may not be on the straight but you gotta work out your own salvation yourself I know your cousin may not be on the straight but you need to strive to stay on the straight I know your followers on Instagram and on other social media platforms they ain't on the straight but you need to stay on the straight tell somebody you gotta stay on the straight you gotta keep walking in truth Jesus said, if we abide in the truth, young people, we going to know the truth and the truth going to make us free. I said, the truth going to make us what? Y'all didn't say it with no authority. The truth going to make us, it's going to make us free. It's going to deliver you. It's going to keep you happy. You're going to prosper. All you got to do is just stay on that path. Woo, you just got to stay on the straight path and don't allow yourself to get distracted, dismayed, or disrupted. Just stay on the straight. If I'm talking right, somebody say he talking right. Look at look at Acts 13:10. The latter part of Acts 13:10. He says, "Will you not cease perverting the straight ways of the Lord?" See, when it comes to the Lord, his ways are straight. His ways are in truth. His ways may not be popular to the world, but his way is straight. And you know what I love about Jesus? If you're not on the straight, he can help you get down. The Bible teaches that he can make a crooked path straight. So that means if you're here in sin, practicing sin, and you know that it's wrong, all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus. And he can turn a crooked life into a straight life. Woo! I ain't always wore a tie. I ain't always talk without cussing. My lifestyle used to be perverted. But God has got me on the straight path. And I'm not the only one. How many else in here, God done got you on the straight path? And I'm striving to stay there. It takes some work. And sometimes, young people, you can look at people's lives and make, and, and it can seem as if they not fighting. They fighting. They fighting. It's always going to be a fight between your flesh and the spirit. 
But the longer you make up your mind and strive to stay on that straight, you see, I can do this. With the help of God, I can, I can do this. Paul said we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So this young man in our text, Jehoash, was doing right in the sight of the Lord. He was staying on the straight, and like many of us, he was righteous or just. But I want you to notice the second character in our text is a priest by the name of Jehoiada. Say that with me. Yeah, that was his name. Jehoiada. Jehoiada was the priest of his day. He wasn't just a priest, he was a legit priest. He was real. How many know you got jack leg preachers and you got real preachers? Don't you think that every preacher is real? No, you got phonies and fakes and you got those which are real. You got teachers that care about students and you got teachers that, that don't care. You got good police officers and you got bad police officers. Every field, every prof profession, you got good and you got bad. This priest right here, he was legitimate. And what I love about the verse is that we see is that the king was connected to the priest. And it's important, young people, not only to know a legit preacher or pastor, but to be connected. You not only need to know the difference between a good church and a bad church, you need to be connected to a good, godly church and pastor. You need to be connected. And what was so awesome about Jehoiada is his name. His name means Yahweh knows. Tell somebody God knows. He was connected to a preacher that had a sound relationship with God. He was connected to a preacher that understood the ways of God and that's what's important young people you don't need to have the testimony where you say I know God for myself that's wonderful but the way the Bible teaches you also need to be connected to a pastor that imitates Christ and then you imitate the preacher even in a youth and young adult church, you need to be connected to your pastor. You need to be connected to other godly ministers, elders, and so forth. Why? They know Yahweh. They know the Lord more intimately than you do. And see, that's important because what you go through sometimes, young people, in your mind, you may feel as if God don't really understand or really know you because of what you're experiencing, because of what you're going through. God, don't you see what I'm going through? Don't you understand? Look at somebody say, he knows. He knows. The Lord knows about it. I was listening to Minister Sarita again. I said, Lord, you just, you just using her to let us know. I hope they get it. Tell somebody, the Lord knows. Let's look at what does the Lord know. Let's go to Psalm 147. And this is who the king was connected to. A priest that knew the Lord. Psalm 147 and 5. Notice, great is our Lord and mighty in power. Here it is. His under 
Standing is infinite. Understanding in this verse has to do with God's knowledge. His wisdom, it's infinite. In other words, God knows everything. Not some things, God knows everything. The Bible talks about how he knows the hairs that are on your head. He knows how many hairs are on your head. Isn't that amazing? Whether you got the real hair or the add-in, he know she got so much that ain't hers and she got so much that that is hers. He knows the amount of sand that's on the shore. He knows everything. The Bible even talks about the things that are hidden. He knows. Things that you done deleted off your phone, he know. Yeah, he know about it. Things you haven't told your parents, guess what? He know. Ain't nothing hid from him. He knows everything. You mean God know more than Siri? Yes. He know more than Siri. He know more than Google. He know more than this AI technology that they're building now. He knows everything. He's the beginning and the ending. The alpha and the omega. Even told a teenage Jeremiah, I know you or knew you before you was even formed in your mother's womb. Now that's some knowledge right there. That's some knowledge right there. Because I'd be like, that's amazing. How do you know me before I even know my myself? Now look at what you're going through in life. Not only does God know about it, but he knows the solutions. He knows what you need while you're going through. He knows when you're coming out of it. He knows that you need to go through what you're going through. Help me out. He knows everything. His understanding is infinite. But I need to echo what the Lord already started this morning more specifically. Let's go to Matthew 6 and 32. Y'all still with me? All right. Matthew 6, 32, the last part says, For your heavenly Father, and this is Jesus speaking, For your heavenly Father knows that you have need all or of all these things. God knows exactly what you need. And sometimes when you struggle, you feel as if God don't, don't know. No, but he know exactly the things that you need. Sometimes you need to struggle. You need to struggle sometimes so you can be appreciative of what God does in your life. Sometimes you need to struggle so you can learn something. You need to struggle so you can learn how to be more responsible. You need to struggle so you can learn how to take care of a car properly. Your car tie needed to go out. Why, Pastor? So you can learn how to change a tire. <laughs> yeah. He knows the things. Now, contextually, he was talking about clothing and needs being met, food and so forth. And sometimes, young folk, you can go through things where you need money, you need food, you need bill money, you, you got some, some needs in your life. And, and see, the Lord is saying once again this morning, he knows what you need. He knows exactly what you are in need of. Now, he may not supply the need when you want to, but he is going to supply the need. You have to have the mindset that, Lord, I'm going through, but I'm going to trust you. And I understand you know exactly what I need. 
You see this hand on this gas tank, Lord. You see that it's right about on E. You know I need $30 to put in this gas tank. Lord, you see all we got is some, some bologna and some, and some peanut butter and some jelly and, and, and a couple of pieces of bread. You know what I need. I need some food off up in here. You know what I need. God doesn't just know what we need. He gonna supply the need. It may be that he supply the need at the deadline or he may supply the need after the deadline. He may supply the need before the deadline, but it's up to him. You know what I learned about God? You can't force his hand. You can't make God meet the need when you want him to. He going to do it when he want to. I used to think, well, maybe if I just fast and put something on this altar, that's just going to, Lord, you just going to sit. No. Mm -mm. He going to do it when he want to. Now, if he tell me to put something on the altar, tell me to pray a little bit harder, that's a part of me getting the need met. But don't think you can ever make God do something. Look at somebody say, you can't make God do nothing. That's it. He does things and chooses to do when he so desires. You're going to get a call back for your application when he say. The door is going to open when he open it. He going to do what he do when he do it. You just need to have the mindset that you don't get bitter, you don't get angry, you don't start doubting. You just got to trust him and know that Yahweh knows. He knows everything that I have need of. Lord, you see this car insurance done went up $25. You know my butt. He know about that. He going to make sure the need is met. Those are the type of people you need to be connected to. And that's what this young man, what he was connected to the preacher of his day that understood God knows and understood God's ways. Who you're connected to, young people, is very important. I say who you are connected to is very important. The Bible says the righteous chooses their friends carefully. Least the wicked lead them astray. Jehoash was not only connected to the preacher, but notice he was divinely instructed. So you not only need to be connected to your pastor, you need to allow him to in instruct you. And that's what was going on in the text. He became king and he did what was right based upon how he was instructed. Based upon how the priests who shared and taught the law instructed him, that's how he conducted his life. In my clothes, young people, I want to show you and teach you what it means to be divinely instructed. And when you are a young adult or a teenager or a grandparent or a parent that's divinely instructed, you're going to have these traits. Because anybody can say they love the Lord. Anybody can let that come out of their mouth. But Jesus is looking at, are you keeping those commandments? Are you following in instructions? How many are with me by a show of hands? All right, this is it. Number one, the first trait of a person, specifically a young person that is divinely instructed, it says that you're being taught to be God conscious. You're being taught to be conscious or aware of God. See, one duty that a priest had back in the Old Testament was to give God's law to the king. That's what the priests had or one of their duties. 
And if the king chose to think, talk, and act based upon the divine instructions, then that king was God conscious. The priest would come and tell him what God's word said, and the king had to make a choice to do what was taught. And because there's nothing new under the sun, God does the same thing. He gives the pastor a word. He comes, the pastor comes before God's young people and young adults, teaches it to them. Then you have to make a choice. Are you going to do it? When you do it, it says that you're becoming God conscious. So you hear such a word today about being instructed by God when you're God conscious and you leave here you heard that God knows about what you have need of and he's going to supply the need then you get a phone call and they're threatening to take away this cut off that you start hearing their voices you go look in the refrigerator and the refrigerator starts talking to you and telling you ain't nothing in here yeah, that refrigerator talked to you. It talked to me. It said, I don't care how many times you come by here. The same thing that was in here three minutes ago. <laughs> it's the same thing in here now. Yeah, you're going to hear voices. But when you're God conscious, you go and you hear what the creditors are saying, the refrigerator is saying, AT&T is saying, but you saying, God said he's going to supply my need. Now you're God conscious. I said, now you're God, you're not only hearing strange voices, now you're hearing the shepherd's voice. God going to meet the need. You're God conscious. You go sit down, you turn the television and you're hungry. You know ain't no little Debbie's or nothing in there. It's talking to you again. Your stomach start growling. How many know your stomach could talk to you? Your stomach start growling. Letting you know, I'm hungry. But that ain't the only voice you hear. Now you're God conscious. You remember them instructions. God going to meet the need. God going to supply the need. Lord, just tell me what to do. You going to supply the need. And see, that's what we're doing. That's what God does. He wants you to be God conscious. Because sometimes, young people, your life situations sometimes get worse. In life, you feel pain. And sometimes those situations do not change when you won't. But God wants you to change. He can change the situation. Remember, he can speak to the wind. He can speak to the sea. But he also speaks to you. And he wants you to change even though you may be going through things. He don't want you to freak out, nut up, act crazy, talk about killing yourself, take some pills. No, just be God conscious. Lord, they done turned the fire up seven times, but I know you're still with me. I ain't bowing down. I was instructed not to worship any other gods. So if it got to go down like this, then it just got to go down. But King, we going to tell you one thing. You can throw us in the fire. We know that our God is able to deliver us. That's what they said. We know they have been in instructed. They were God conscious. When you get by yourself and, your, and them sexual desires start arousing, look, God put that in you. That's how God made you. But you got to know when it's time. And you have to tell yourself, I feel it. Woo, I'm getting turned on. Woo, you, 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 you know what I'm saying? No, you, you could. I know you could slide through. I'm ready. <laughs> but, but you got to talk to yourself. Lord, you see what's going on? You better help me. <laughs> you, better, you better help me, Lord. And he'll tell you what to do. He'll guide us into all oh, truth. You got to be God conscious. You just don't need to be conscious of your fleshly desires. No, you need to be conscious of, of God. And when you are divinely instructed, it says that you are God conscious you already going through financially already need 
You have to be God conscious. Well, I know it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now you're not just conscious of being broke. You're conscious of how to get your blessing. You're conscious now. You're to the point to where you've been instructed and now you are aware of what you should do and what you should not do. Am I helping anybody? You have to be God conscious, young folk, when you leave this church. You need to be God conscious when you come into church, but show sure enough when you, when you leave this church. Because you're going to be feeling a lot of things and hearing a lot of voices. You need to remember that you have been divinely instructed. Number two, when you're divinely instructed, it says that you are being instilled, young people, with godly traditions. You're being instilled with godly traditions. A tradition is something that is important that has been passed down from your elders. Something important that has been passed down from your elders, whether it's from your pastor or whether it's from your grandmother, your mother, is something important that has been passed down. When you study Jehoash's life, he maintained two traditions that he learned from his elders. Number one, giving. When you read the rest of this chapter, you see that this young boy kept the tradition with God's people about bringing God his money. That's a tradition, young people, you should never break. Always bring God his money. Always bring God his money first. Honor him with your possessions and God going to take care of you. Most importantly, you don't have to worry about a curse coming on your life. But then second, the second tradition that Jehoash had when you read the rest of the chapter is that he honored God's house. Whenever he looked at God's house and saw it broke down, he was all about repairing God's house, making sure God's house was suitable, it was in excellence. He would make sure the contributions that people bought, that they would take the money and they would make sure God's house was in order. There are just certain traditions, young people. You have to understand when you're divinely instructed, you're being taught to keep those traditions. Coming to church is a good tradition. I don't care how much fun you have in the world, young people. You need to keep the tradition. I need to be at church on Sunday. Even when you go off, whether it be to the military or the school, in your mind, you need to be, I got to find a church. That's one thing I thank God that was taught to DJ as he went to England and other parts of the world. He would constantly tell me, Pastor, I'm looking for a church. I'm looking for somewhere I can go worship. And he would tell me on occasion, I found a place, but it ain't nothing like home. He, he would tell me they do things different, but, but he understood the importance of being in God's house. Hearing the word, worshiping his God. And God honored that. One of the first things my wife told me when she came home Friday, guess who I saw at work? I said, who? She said, DJ. I said, for real, DJ, that was in Hungary? She said, yes. That's how she talked. You know what the first thing she told me about you, brother DJ? She said, DJ said he back stateside and he done found him a church in North Carolina that he going to. He done found him a church and he done got planted. He done got involved with their youth ministry. I said, boy, look at God. See, when you are divinely instructed, young people, you hold on to traditions. You hold on to that. Going to church, praying, that should be a good tradition. Praying in your personal life every day. You should have the mindset from hanging around your pastor, don't a day need to go by 
that I don't talk to my God. And we can reference that with Daniel 6. He prayed three times a day. He, no matter what he was doing. That's a good tradition. Am I right about it? Being on time. That's a good. We don't only need to be on time in God's house. We need to be on time when we handle business outside God's house. And I love it. I love it when we go places and I just sit back and watch the trendsetters and y'all look at y'all watch and be like, these folk late. <laughs> That's a good tradition. How many done got that in you? If somebody tell you three o'clock, you don't do CPT time. You expecting three. <laughs> three That's a good tradition. You start on time. Fellas, pulling up your pants. That's a good tradition. Ain't nothing wrong with being fashionable, but don't be showing your tail. That's a good, a good tradition. Am I right about it? I wish I had the fellas get on board, but that's a good tradition. That's it. And I could go on and on, but when you're divinely appointed, divinely instructed, you're holding on to traditions. You're holding on to them. Am I right about it? And that's what Jehoash did. And that's what you should do. I'm finna make somebody mad. I know I'm finna make somebody mad, but I'm gonna say it. I gotta say it. Look at somebody say, he gotta say it. Even trends that are popular in the world, you gotta remember who you are. You gotta remember who you are and how you have been taught. And remember you are an example to other folk. And it should just be certain things. You say, you know what? I know that's popular in the world, but I ain't doing that. I done been instructed. I done been taught. Woo, look how y'all looking at me. I done been taught. Am I right about it? Let's go to the last trait and then we, we getting out of here. When you're divinely instructed, It says that you're allowing God to aim you in a certain direction. When you are divinely instructed, you are allowing God to shoot you into the direction that pleases him. You understand that, Lord, I've been bought with a price. Whatever you want to do with my life, I submit. When I got saved, God immediately started dealing with me. I knew in some type, form, or fashion, I was going to be serving young people. Even though I was going to school to be in journalism. I knew I was in school right then to get saved and since I started to graduate. But I knew ultimately God was going to use me in ministry. And I had to submit to that. I had to say, all right, Lord. Whatever you want to do, if this is what you want to do with my life, I'm going to allow you to do it. When you are divinely taught, young people, you're allowing God to do what's best for you. You're submitting to it. This is the way he wants me to go. This is the way I'm going to go. And I quoted it earlier, John 16, 13. The Holy Spirit will guide us into what? All truth. Sometimes, young people, God is trying to do a work in your life, and sometimes we're guilty of fighting it. God trying to get certain things out of you, but you fight what God is trying to do. Trying to take you down a path of prosperity, a pathway of peace, and so forth, but sometimes we fight it. We buck, we get in our flesh, but you have to allow God to guide you and direct you in the way that he wants you to go. Even when you mess up, God can still get the glory out of your mess ups. Don't fight it, just go through the process, let God restore you and take you down the path to where he not only restores you, but he can use your life to help somebody else not to do the same dumb stuff 
that you did. See, God is so smooth, so awesome, he get the glory out of our mistakes. I've told y'all before, you can either be an example of what to do or be an example of what not to do. But when you're instructed, when you're taught, you're saying, God, this is the path you want me to go, then I'm going to go. I'm going to let you shoot me this way. You allowed me to go up, but then I came down. If this is the will you have for my life, I'm just going to ride with you. But I know I'm not going to be down long. Because as long as I stay on that straight path, you're going to take me right back up. Young, but divinely instructed. If God wants to use you in prayer, let him have his way. If he wants to use you to teach his word, let him have his way. If, if he want to use you to be the one on your team to stand up for what's right, let him use you. Let, let him use you. Lord, this is what's best. They knew my whorish ways, but now they're going to know my holy ways. Let, let, them, let them use you. Let them use you. Sometimes it's good that folks saw you when you was down. So when God exalts you, they know it wasn't nobody, nobody but the Lord. It wasn't nobody but the Lord. Man, she used to be all into that right now. Man, that's how we knew her. But look at how God done changed her life. Apostle Paul went through the same thing. Paul had it so bad, they didn't even believe he was saved. And he had been saved for about 13 years, but they were scared. He was like, no, I'm really this. I'm really about this life now. Sometimes, young people, you go through things so God can get the glory. And you learn about yourself and life so you can be a help to somebody else. Oftentimes, our life is bigger than just ourself. Just like Jesus. What he went through and did was wonderful, but that was for us. The Bible said that he died for for us and your life whether you want to admit it or not is for somebody it's for somebody else all that I've been through and go through is to help somebody somebody else and so I get the instructions and I just say well Lord if this is what you want me to go through so so be it after this lesson how many understand it's important to be young and divinely instructed let's give God a hand clap I'm gonna stop right there